let's get started on today's topic, which is Pythagoras. And we're going to be looking at Pythagoras on the Cartesian plane specifically. Now, I'm going to be talking about things that are going to seem very obvious to all of us. Okay, don't even stress about where we're going with this um, because it's going to get us where we need to go. It's just, we're going to take the almost roundabout way just to make sure that everybody's with me on the same plane. Okay, so I know that if I have my Cartesian plane, this is my first quadrant and second quadrant. And this over here is my third quadrant. And this is my fourth quadrant. Now, we also know that we can put the cost, it's known as a cost diagram, we can put that in here. We know that everything in this quadrant, quadrant four, cos is positive in that quadrant. In this quadrant, all of them are positive. In the second quadrant, uh, sine is positive. And in the third quadrant, tan is positive. Everything else in those quadrants would be negative. So cos and tan would be negative here, cos and sine would be negative here, and sine and tan would be negative here. Right, so we know that when we're dealing with the Cartesian plane, what is actually happening is that they're giving us a coordinate. They're only giving us a coordinate. They're not really giving us the drawing that we normally see when we come across um, the Cartesian plane. So if they say that our coordinate is the point three, or let's say the point four three, right? That is our coordinate then they want to know that if this is my x-axis, and remember this is also zero degrees on the x-axis on the y-axis, and we can go around. If I draw a line from the center of my Cartesian plane to that coordinate that they've given me over there, okay, that then I can like, it's almost like I'm gonna put a pin over here, and I'm going to get like a pencil with a string tied to the end. And we are basically drawing a circle all the way around our Cartesian plane. All the way around. Right. And that's exactly why we call this the radius. Right. This particular side is called the radius. And we know if we wanted to calculate the value of the radius itself, then um, we can then just kind of extend. The, we know that our x value we can look at it down here, over here, and we'll say that this is four units away from the origin. And we know that this over here, this value on this side, our y value is three units away from um, the y axis. It's parallel to the y axis and that's three. Now, if we were to calculate for the radius then, we would know that we've created a right angled triangle and we can then use Pythagoras, Pythag, to find this side, can anybody tell me what is the radius that we would get in the case of this particular question? R is equal to what? You can literally do it in your head very, very quickly. Uh, it's not very taxing. Anybody want to tell me? Oh, look at what teacher Coco's done now. Okay, good. Thank you, Nkateko and Nkaja. Excellent. We know that our radius is going to be equal to five. And these things are obvious. There's nothing new about what we've just learned here. We've been looking at these things since grade 10. Okay, the, the difference comes when they start restricting things for us because they tell us that, okay, we've got an angle theta or beta or alpha or whatever we want to call this angle over here. And now when they give us these two coordinates, they're going to say, we've got the sine of theta is equal to three over five. But, but, they say to us that our theta only exists between 90 and 270 degrees, okay? Now, there are a couple of things that we now need to go and think about when we see something of this sort. We have to think about, okay, first, where's 90 and, um, where's 90 and 70, 270 degrees? We know that 90 degrees is over here and 270 degrees is over here. So we're working in quadrants two and three. We're working either here or here. Now, the other thing that we need to note is that because they've given us sine as the ratio that we're going to use here, we need to think about whether sine, whether the, the ratio that they've given us is positive or negative. If it's positive, that then tells me that I need to go to the quadrant where sine will be positive. And that will then be here, okay? Now, if we think about this, if they had made 
this entire thing negative. Where would my quadrant then be? If my theta is still defined between 90 degrees and 270, which quadrant would this fall under? Quadrants two or three, which one? Good, quadrant three, excellent. We know this because the only part where we know that sine is y over r, the only part where our y value is going to be negative is in the third quadrant. Besides sine is positive over there. Where is sine negative? It's down here, right? So we can then look at this as being, remember that's y, so we're gonna go negative three down and our radius, we're just going to draw a random point because at the moment we don't know what our x value is. We're going to say that our radius, our y value is negative three. Our x value is x. We don't know what it is yet. And we know that our radius over here will equal five. Now, why did I not immediately say that that negative value over there belongs to five? Why did I automatically assume that my negative value belonged to three? Who can tell me? Anybody? Good, R is always positive Google literature, that's it. But I want, to, I want somebody to explain to me, why is R always positive? Who's got any idea? Why do, why do teachers just say, guys, R is always positive, make R positive? What are we getting at exactly? <laughs> Yes, non chabulo. Hi, non chabulo. We knew this would happen, teacher. No. We knew that this would happen. Yes, non chabulo. You are in the correct grade 12 class. Teacher Lee's just not here today. Okay. All right, guys. Now, if we think about this, guys, that's it. And Rafense, as I was about to explain it, that is it. R can never be negative because what we're actually calculating for is a length of a radius. Okay. We can never say that the radius of the circle is negative four uh, centimeters. Nobody can ever call a length a negative number. And when we're looking at the radius, we're actually looking at a positive number. So that means that we can never actually claim that our radius or our hypotenuse in this case, which is the same thing, that that is going to be negative. So whenever we see a negative in any of the ratios that involve sine and cos, that negative is automatically going to belong to the thing on top because our radius cannot be equal to zero. I'm sorry, to a negative number, not to zero. Okay, good. So I can then do that. And I know that the distance from there to there, that will be my X value. And I can then calculate for my X value. This is negative three over here. And I can calculate for my negative value. All right, just give me a thumbs up if all of this makes sense. Okay, just remembering exactly where it is that we've put things together, um, how to then define or to read out what they've given us in, this, uh, in the sense of if theta is defined between 90 and 270, or if theta is defined between zero and 180 or 180 to 360, we need to remember that there's certain things that will apply and not everything will apply to, to those things. So if they asked us, where is theta positive? then uh, where is theta positive? We're going to have to think about the first and the second quadrant. We can't then talk about the quadrant we're in because that quadrant would be negative. All right, let's look at some simple questions. We're going to warm up to the questions that we want to actually get to, all right? But we're going to start with a couple of simple questions before we get into it. All right, I want you guys to evaluate the two questions that I've given you over here. And you will notice very quickly that we're going to be using the reduction formula for some of these. So go ahead, guys. Um, and see what you can do with this with these two particular questions. Yeah. Okay. So what Atan is saying is that sine of seventy is equal to two sine thirty five cos of thirty five. And because they haven't given us this two over here to compensate for the two, we can just multiply by half and multiply by half. So we can then change sine of 35, cos of 35 to half sine of 70. Okay. 
And that is going to give us, okay, now let me delete all of this nonsense. Sorry, guys. If you were taking notes, I'm very sorry. I'm very, very sorry if we were taking notes. Okay. All right, this will then give us a half sine of 70 degrees over negative cos of 20 degrees. And then we can take negative cos of 20 degrees and we can change that to negative sine of 70 degrees. So that will give us a half sine 70 degrees over negative sine 70 degrees. These two things will cancel and we will therefore get negative a half. Okay, for those of you, for those of you who got there way before me and were following my long train of thought, you guys are going to pass maths a lot better than I did in metric. I'm not kidding. Okay, all right. Yes, I'm here. Good evening, ma. Good evening, my sweetie. What's up? Um, why did we change it from sine thirty-five times cos thirty-five into sine seventy? Okay, so you know the double angle. Double angle says the double angle of sine 2a is the same as 2 sine of a cos of a, correct? Yes. Okay, so now if we look at what they've given us over here, they've given us sine of 70 degrees. Now, if I had to do the double angle for sine of 70 degrees, I yep. would then break that up into 2 sine of 35 times of 35. Are you with me here? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now, the problem with the question that they've given us over here is that they haven't given us the two that we need here in front. Okay. So what I'm doing to compensate for the fact that we don't have the two is I'm multiplying by a half. Oh, okay. So that will then eliminate the two. But if I do it on this side, I'm going to have to do it on this side as well. Mm. Okay, so the two and the half will cancel and give us one. So in order for me to write sine 35, cos 35 as a double angle, I now need to take half of that and make that half of sine 70. Oh, is that okay. making sense? Yes, that is making sense, ma'am. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome, my sweetie. Leanne, did that kind of sort of explain the, the question to you? Did that help? I hope it did and that we didn't leave you behind. Okay, okay awesome stuff. All right, we're not going to do that one just for the sake of time. I want us to do this question down here, all right? I want you guys to look at the, sorry, I just need to plug my computer in before it dies. Okay, let's have a look at this question over here that says, if tan is equal to three over four, where theta, or tan of theta, where theta is between 160 and 360, calculate without the use of a calculator and with the aid of a diagram, the value of the following. Okay, so we know guys that if we draw, a diagram like that, right? We know that we want tan of theta and it needs to be three over, uh, three over four. And we know that both of these things are positive. Both of them are positive. So my first instinct is to be like, oh, positive three, positive four, draw it over there. However, they're telling us that our parameter is in between 180 and 360. Which quadrant will then this have to fall under, guys? It won't be quadrant one because quadrant one is not included in 180 and 360. Which quadrant would this part then fall under? Good. It would be three and four. Good. Yes, in Tokozo, it's three and four. Good. However, one thing we do know, guys, the one thing we do know is that both of my values are positive. Okay, both of my values are positive. And they want where tan is positive. So it won't just be quadrants three and four. It's going to be quadrant. Which quadrant will it be? That's it. Yes, my man. It is quadrant 
three. Okay, now I need you guys to note that just because they've given them to us as positive three and positive four, if I draw this in the fourth, I mean, in the third quadrant, if I draw it over here, what do I then notice about both my X and my Y values? What do I notice about them? Good, Atan, that's it. They will both be negative. So I will have opposite, sorry, this is going to be tan of theta is equal to Y over X. Therefore, my Y value will be negative four and my X value will be negative three. All right, so that is what we're looking at over here. So we know that this is negative three and this over here is negative four. All right, I want you guys with what we've got over here, can I ask you guys to calculate for R for me? Because we're going to need R. As soon as we see these kinds of questions, we already know that we're going to need the value of R. So you can calculate for R very quickly. It will take you like less than three seconds. You can do it in your head. That's it, R is five. It's not difficult at all, five, good. All right, I want you guys to calculate for me the value of question A and B, and then we'll have a conversation about C once we're done. All right, I'm gonna give you guys another five minutes. Did I mix the values? Um, Kanta, where did I mix the values? Oh, uh, I think he means the three and four. Uh, it's uh, opposite of adjacent. Yeah, guys, Mem is winning today. <laughs> Mem yeah. is winning today. Sorry, sorry, guys. Thank you, thank you, Nkanta. See, I think you guys, you must just tell Teacher Lee on Tuesday. Uh, we think we can teach the lesson now because yeah, the teachers they are also not they are also not there. We are also tired. <laughs> okay. Yes, Lebohang, I see. Yes, Lebohang, you can ask a question. You, you're more than welcome to unmute and ask your question, my sweetie. Or you can type it in the chat if you're not feeling confident. Oh, ma'am, can I ask? We well, can go back to it, but towards the end of the lesson, ma'am, I have a question about the first, the first uh, oh. thingy. Sure, not problem. Okay, ma'am. Okay, sure, we can do that. All right. Um, Leanne, ma'am, is it not supposed to be positive? Which one, Leanne, which one? Okay, the only one that would be positive, Leanne, is the, is the radius. Okay, so now remember, Leanne, if I'm in between 180 and 360, I'm from here to there, it's all the values in between here. But they're telling me that, all my values for tan become positive. And I know the only way that I can make tan positive in these two quadrants is if both of them, both of these numbers are negative. Okay. So neither of them can be positive. All right. They both need to be negative in order for us to get a positive. That's it. Thank you, teacher Nels. All right, three more minutes, guys.
Patan, is that the question for A or B? Well, we're gonna have a, a look at it just now, actually. I think you guys have about 10 seconds, write your last sentence. Um, I want to see if it is here. It is. Okay, let me just pop it. Oh, teacher Coco. Okay. I'm trying to just get this thing. There we go. All right, guys, let's have a, a quick chat about these. All right, so I don't want us to ever get confused because we see this quite often, especially in matric papers. When they ask us, when they give us a, a ratio in terms of just theta, in terms of just theta, and then they ask us a question like, what is the value of sine two theta? Can I please just implore you, please don't do this. Don't go sine times two of whatever your angle would be. We've seen people take the, the arctan of, three over four, find the angle, and you find that maybe the angle is like 37 degrees, and they will take two times 37 degrees in here, and then they'll give us some oblong answer that looks like 0, 0,7, 0, 0,7. This is absolutely incorrect, okay? We cannot look at it that way, okay? Because the ratio that we've been given is not for 2a. It's not of two times the angle itself. It's like if you thought of the idea of the sine of 2 theta, what they've actually done is they've taken our sine graph here and they've changed its period. So that value that you thought you were going to get on your calculator isn't even correct to begin to, to begin. Okay, to begin with. All right, so we can't actually put it in here like that. What we need to do is we need to find a connection between the thing that they've given us, between the thing that they've given us, which is theta and two theta. And we know that the connection between theta and two theta is our double angles. So as soon as we see that there's a difference in our theta and our two theta, our minds need to automatically go to double angles, right? So if we wanted to answer this first question, we need to change sine of two theta into two sine of theta cos of theta. And then that automatically then recalibrates our brain to the idea that we have theta. We don't have two theta, we have theta. So I can then put this into my calculator, or I don't even have to, I can do it without it, two times, and then I just need the dimensions or the ratio of sine of theta. I know that sine of theta is y over r. So we're going to get negative 3 over 5 multiplied by cos of theta, which is negative 4 over 5. Put that into our calculator exactly like that. OK, so we will then get 12 over 25 times 2. That would give us 24 over 25. Right, just give me a thumbs up if that's what you got as well. Okay, if that's what you, you got for that first answer. Okay, awesome, excellent guys. All right, for cos of two theta, we can do either one. All right, we can do either one. You can choose whichever double angle formula you want to use. I normally go with the first one because I don't want to have to like two times something. I'm just going to square everything. Okay, so I'm going to use cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Whichever one you guys choose, that's fine as well. Now, cos squared theta will be negative four over five squared minus negative three over five squared. And this will give me 16 over 25 over 25 minus nine over 25. And that will give me 15 over 25. And we can make that a little bit simpler. 17 over 25, sorry, not 15, 17, 17 over 25. There we go. All right, 17 
over 25. Now, if we want to answer for tan of 2a, what do we know about tan seven. itself? Is it seven, not 17? Seven. Seven. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, teacher Nels. I'm busy adding and subtracting today. I'm I'm not doing so great today. Yes, Amahe. Um, ma'am, we know that tan is equal to sine over cos theta. Beautiful. But remember, Amahe, this is not uh, sine theta and cos theta. We're going to have mm. sine 2 theta over? A cos 2 theta. Beautiful. And then what do we still have to do on the top and on the bottom? We would still then need to use our double angles on the top and on the bottom. But we don't actually need to, guys. We've already done the work. We've done the work. We know what sine of two theta is, is 24 over 25. And cos of two theta, we've just calculated as seven over 25. So all we're actually going to do is just plug and play. So to get to the answer for C, and now I'm going to start turning into teacher Lee and writing everywhere. <laughs> Tan of two theta is going to equal to 24 over 25 divided by seven over 25. Okay, now you guys will bear with me because I've been bad at fractions since I was young. So I'm gonna do what we used to do in grade seven, 24 over 25 divided by seven over 25. And then I'm gonna tip and times, guys, don't judge me. Don't judge me, I have to, <laughs> I have to. My brain doesn't work that way. I don't know, fractions for me just don't do it. And matrices, I don't like matrices as, at all. All right, so my final answer would be 24 over seven. All right. Okay, I hope that was helpful. I want us to look at one more question. Um, I'm gonna ask teacher, um, teacher Lee to carry on with it in on Tuesday's lesson, if that's the case. Uh, if we don't actually get to finish it, I'm hoping to finish it in three minutes. Let's see if we can actually do that. All right, so they've given us over here that sine of 34 is equal to P. Right. So if we look at our Cartesian plane, guys, if we look at our Cartesian plane, sine of 34 will be over here. No, oh, man, don't move that. Okay, sine of 34 will be like that. 34 degrees over there is equal to P. Now we know because it's sine of 34, just rewrite it over here, sine of 34 we know that sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse or y over r. So we're just going to take p and we're going to put it over 1. OK, so I know that my y value will then be p and my r value would be 1. Can we then calculate for the x value, guys? We can just use Pythagoras to calculate for the x value. Okay, we can go x is equal to the square root of one minus p squared. Okay, for those of you who don't know, I've got there, x squared is equal to one squared minus p squared. One minus p squared. All right, so this part over here will be one minus p squared. All right, so if we had to answer questions based on this, let's look at the first question that they've got here for us, guys. Okay, it says sine of 214. Now, first thing we're going to do, anybody got any suggestions for us? How could we possibly take sine of 214 and write it in terms of P? Remember, the answer that we get needs to have P in it. Anybody got any ideas? Good, that's it, Oratilwe. We can then say sine of 214 is sine of 180 plus 34 degrees, right? And we know that would fall in the third quadrant. So this will then reduce to negative sine of 34 degrees, which is just the same as negative P. Okay, that's the answer we're looking for. All right, um, unfortunately, we're, got, we're gonna have to stop here. Um, 
Otherwise, we're going to run out of time. Well, we have run out of time. Teacher Nelly, do you want to put the link to the quiz in the chat? Um, and then, guys, Teacher Lee will be back on Thursday. I know I wasn't actually supposed to be here. I found out at 4.30. So I'm sorry if the lesson was a little slow. But uh, when Teacher Lee comes back, you guys can breathe a, a breath of fresh air. Yes, Amakhi, I'm going to move back up. Oh, I wanted to answer Amakhi's question. Like, if it's based on the trick. I think it's what you did today. Um, like uh, trig ratios and yeah, in terms of trigonometry. So what you did today. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Um, all right, somebody else that said, ma'am, can you please scroll up so I can take a screenshot? Leanne, where am I scrolling up to? <laughs> you need to let me know where to scroll up to. Yes, Le Oh, now Kripi, can I just go up to the first question we did of the uh, sign 35? Ma'am, yes. can I ask why, um, why didn't we change it to sign 55 and leave it cos uh, 35? Which one? Um, for the first one, ma'am. Okay, all right. So if we had changed it, if we had changed it to sign 55, we were going to end up in the end, we would have ended up with uh, sign 55 uh, or cos, cos 55 and sine 55, correct? And that would have been the same. We would have been able to do the same thing, sine 55, right? And then what we would have gotten over here is a half of sine of 55 degrees over negative cos 20 degrees. That's not going to help us because the thing that we wanted to do, no, I'm lying. Okay, if this was sine 55, okay, this would have been 10. Yes, this would have become 110. Now, that isn't going to help us because what we want to do is get rid of negative cos 20. So what we need to do then, uh, what we wanted in the end is a co-ratio or a co-function that we could cancel the one with. Okay, and that's why we use 35 instead, because we know that we can then change cos of 20 into sine of 70. In this case, we were going to have to start doing funny things like reducing and trying to get 180 minus, they just wouldn't mesh together. So what we actually wanted in this case was a co-function on the, on the top and on the bottom. Okay, that's why. All right, I'm gonna give, uh, I think it was Leanne who wanted Leanne. to take a picture yeah. of a screenshot of 10. All right, I've got to go. Bye everybody.